Here in this video, we're going to get into my expectations for Tesla stock this week. As you know from the last video, there is big economic data coming that's going to cause, I would imagine, a big move for markets as well. I'm going to give you an expectation of how I think these data reports are going to come out and what effect that will have on Tesla stock. We're also going to look at option positioning even down the line the next month or three months. Well, where do people think Tesla's stock is going from there? We're going to look at a lot of different charts and historical data to try and put this market into a little bit of context for you. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. That greatly helps to promote these videos to a larger audience that I think needs to hear this information. So first things first, on a technical basis, Tesla is, I would say, neither bullish or bearish. You're off of your lows that were in the 190s, right? So you're at 214. That's obviously better than being in the 190s. So you're not super bearish by any means. You're coming off of that 6% drop on Thursday. You rallied 2% on Friday. You're not quite to your 200-day moving average. And you're not quite to the lows. This range looks like you're seeing a lot of demand coming in. And even when you hit the 190s, you didn't stay there for long. Well, like one day. Well, two days, technically. The third day, you were back in the 200s and then proceeded to rally all the way up to the 220s, right? 226 was the high. And it looks like there was a lot of rejection around uh, 225 or so. Every, every time we got there, we did get rejected. If you can retake that 200-day moving average, well, that's going to be pretty dang bullish. And I'm still tactically bullish on the markets right now. That would include Tesla stock, specifically anything that is interest rate sensitive that will benefit from rate cuts. In 2024, that's what we're expecting. Markets right now are pricing in 0.75 to 1% of rate cuts for 2024. If the economic data gets worse and it looks like we're heading into a recession or if inflation does indeed fall more than expectations, the markets might price in even more rate cuts, and they might price them in sooner. Now, markets are forward-looking. So if we're expecting the first rate cut by May or June, before it was March for a brief period of time, well, probably three months before you actually get the first rate cut, Wall Street's going to be buying stocks that will benefit from the rate cut. It's not actually when you get the rate cut that the stocks will benefit. It's before. So with that logic in mind, again, if you get worsening economic data, if you get inflation that is falling more than expectations, you're going to get the markets positioning more into those interest rate sensitive companies, into stocks that will benefit from rates going down. And I think Tesla is by far, hands down, the biggest beneficiary of rates coming down. I should also point out the fact that Tesla is the most shorted stock in the market by far at $17.05 billion. This is after Tesla has went from 300 down to where we are today at 214. If you start to get an increase in Tesla's share price, you're going to see the short losses mounting at a aggressive pace. And I think the, the simple narrative that I just went over probably leads to even more shorts covering on short positions because you probably don't want to be short on a stock that is going to benefit the most from rates going lower in 2024. We don't know how low rates are going to go, but there's a pretty good certainty that rates will go lower. So that will have a benefit to Tesla. Tesla short interest sits at $17.05 billion. This is over 2% of the entire short interest on the entirety of the stock market. This is a very big short 
for a lot of in individuals, hedge funds, institutions alike. Now, a look at the calendar here for the week ahead. There's a lot of smaller data points coming out, not as much on Monday, uh, but on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. A lot of different reports, a lot of different surveys, a bunch of Fed speakers. They can have their own individual moves on our markets, but by far the biggest thing that's going to drive probably a multi-day move that's going to be the biggest uh, story of this week is that CPI report on Tuesday. Now, a brief rundown of the expectations, 0.3% for core month over month, that is expected. 0.3% was the number from last month. Year over year core is expected at 4.1%. Last month was, you got 4.1%. Now, month over month headline is expected at 0.1%. Uh, your last month reading was 0.4%, so a big drop there. And your year over year is expected at 3.3%. Last month was 3.7%. Now, I'm personally pretty bullish on this inflation report. Now, core, the vast majority of what affects core is housing and You've started to see some housing rollover. What I'm hearing from people is that you're just not seeing those same price increases when they're signing new leases. So I'm somewhat optimistic that that will start to um, pick up this season. Just normally is when a lot of, um, you know, new new leases do get signed right around this moment in time the spring's big as well but uh right now tends to also be uh pretty big so i think your core is probably going to come in a little lighter than expectations around 0 0.2 would make sense for core month over month around 3.9 makes sense to me for core year over year maybe four percent but I think you come in a little lighter than that. The forecast from trading economics is actually 4% for your core year over year. So 3.9%, that, that makes a little bit of, of sense to me. Now, I agree with the month over month headline numbers. As 0.1% month over month, you've, you've seen energy kind of roll over. It started to recover recently, but now you're in November. So your November numbers are obviously not going to be 0 0.1, probably 0 0.2 or even 0 0.3. But for October, you did see energy prices come down quite a bit, especially towards the end of the month. And your year over year is probably going to come in at 3.3%. It wouldn't surprise me to see this even come in at like 3.2%. So what does this mean? Well, as long as inflation is coming down, that's great. As, as long as you don't see a spike in inflation, that's awesome. Stocks are probably going to be bullish on this inflation report, I would imagine. And, and this could lead to, you know, further expectations that the Fed will reduce rates maybe even sooner than what we're currently expecting. For Wednesday, retail sales. I think retail sales could actually be more important or equally as important as the CPI report. Because we're expecting CPI is going to come down, uh, again, on your month over month, your year over year for your headline. Core is a little bit of a wild card. Again, I think it's going to come in light. If it comes in really light, well, inflation is going to be, you know, the biggest thing to obviously, you know, be watching for. And that is going to move the markets. But right now, as an investor in our markets, there's two things you need to be watching for. As, as you know right now, bad news has been good news. Bad economic data has been good news because it's not that bad. At one point down the line, that will change. Bad news will start to be bad news, especially if inflation is coming down and is lower. Inflation is lower today than it, than it was you know, for the last 18 months or so. So if you start to get recessionary data, well, stocks are not going to like that. I don't know if that's going to start this week, if retail sales could have that effect. I don't know if it's a month or three months down the line, but at some point that will happen. Now, retail sales are specifically important because they affect your GDP estimates. They affect like literal GDP because about 70% of GDP is personal spending, personal consumption. Well, you're expecting negative 0.1%. Well, 
and last month was 0.7%. That's a big reason why your Q3 GDP report came in at almost 5% because personal spending was really high. You also had inventory, uh, you know, reductions. You also had uh, uh, quite a bit of of other things as well that were also helping um, the GDP report come in at 5% yesterday. But retail sales are expected at negative 0.1%. Uh, trading economics is estimating 0% for retail sales. So that in and of itself, well, it's not screaming a recession. It's not screaming economic growth as well. Now, as you can see from this chart, this was November, December of last year. You were quite negative right? Uh, negative 1.3%, negative 0.7%. After that, you were very good on your retail sales in January, and then you were negative again to start off the year. And then the remainder of 2023 from April until now has been positive for retail sales. Now, if you were to get and, and, and just notice how this aligns with kind of what happened in the markets in 2022, the markets were way lower at this period of time than they are today. And a lot of that was because of the recession fears, right? Recession fears in 2022 caused stocks to fall. A lot of people thought there was going to be a recession in the beginning of 2023. That did not happen. So stocks rallied. It's as simple as that. Now, retail sales, I personally think could come in at like negative five, negative 0.5, maybe even more than that. I just don't see a lot of people out there spending money. And I this could have, again, that positive reaction to markets because you would definitely push up the probabilities of, of rate cuts maybe as soon as even March, right? For March, there is a 68.6% chance of the Fed continuing to hold and a 12.4% chance of a rate cut. That could start to move up to like 30 or 40% if, if you get a bad uh, retail sales number. Now, if CPI comes in lower than expectations, you could actually start to price in a rate cut for March. And if that's the case, uh, as long as retail sales are not too bad and the narrative doesn't switch to, hey, are we in a recession or are we going into one? Then I think stocks could... Uh, do pretty well here in the short term based off of that. I think it's also worth pointing out on a tactical basis, you do have a cup and handle that is confirming the break to the upside. So usually when this happens, you can get, I mean, quite the rally. Typically, you can break past your cup and handle um, or kind of cup peaks, right, which would be back here, what we've seen in July and what you've seen in 2021. So that could put the markets at a new all-time high, potentially heading into 2024. So I don't want to be short here at all. And that would really only be like a 6.5% gain from current levels um, on the NASDAQ to get back to new all-time highs. Uh, so it's, it's really not even that far away in the grand scope of things. So I don't think that is an outreaching statement to see a 6.5% gain from now until the end of the year, this cup and handle formation actually supports it. The AI investor sentiment has also drastically shifted and is now a lot more bullish than it was before. And you have seen a, a, a rally in the market. Some people point this out as a reason to maybe be on the sidelines to expect a pullback. But I, I, I don't look at that that way right i don't think just because more people are bullish now than they were before and you've seen a drastic shift in sentiment that you necessarily have to be bearish i think there is a reason for that shift in sentiment and that is a weakening economy but not quite a recession and inflation coming down and the fed just being easier with fed policy i think those are things to be bullish on and i don't agree with just being bearish based on the investor uh you know ai investor sentiment well shifting from super bearish to super bullish also to support the logic this is the percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average of the markets and you're at about 40 percent back here in july you were at like 75 percent so the average stock well is still not doing all that well, right? If you were to get something along the same lines of what we've seen in July, I think that would put 
stocks at new all-time highs on the NASDAQ. And I, I don't necessarily think we get there just by big tech continuing to move higher. I think big tech could actually take a breather here and you could see participation through the rest of our markets. That could be a Tesla. That could be other stocks as well. So I actually think this week is going to be a big mover for Tesla. I think on the bullish side of things on a better case scenario, you could probably hit around 240 for Tesla. If you can get above that 200 day moving average with some momentum with, you know, a good CPI report, a decent retail sales number, then I think you could, you know, really make a move to the upside as investors position capital again in stocks that could benefit from rates, um, you know, coming down in 2024. I, th I think this is pre pretty logical for anyone that's been investing in the markets for a while. I think you should you should understand this. Now, I think if CPI comes in a little bit hotter than expectations, retail sales comes in really hot and just pushes back on that narrative, the Fed should be cutting rates, then you could easily see a 10% or so pullback in Tesla back down to the 190s. I personally think you probably find support around 200. That would only be a move down of about six and a half percent. So that's Honestly, not too outrageous. The upside, you could target around 12% for this week and uh, you know, end the week about 240. I'm 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 hard pressed to think that Tesla stock does not move big this week, that Tesla stays around 215, 220. Um, no, I think you're either gonna break out above the 200 day moving average, which is gonna send the stock potentially much higher around 240, or well, you're not, and you fall from here and you retest that 200 level potentially into the 190s if you look at the rsi that is at 42.41 which is uh under 50 so that's on the oversold side so that is not exactly um you know in a good spot as of right now but it definitely um could get worse from here but overall supports the stock probably should be going higher anytime you hit 30 on the rsi you tend to bounce to about 70 right? Almost literally every single time. So you hit 30 back here in late October, you've bounced to 40, 42. Well, you could see that bounce to 30 um, on, you know, good news this week. And that potentially could even put Tesla higher than 240, even as high as 250. That would be my estimate. Your 50 day moving average is at 241. If you break that and, you know, find some upside momentum, then your 100 day moving average is at 249. So call it 250. So that's like your really good uh, scenario for this week. I wouldn't expect that, but you definitely could see um, quite the upside move to 240 seems pretty logical to me. We still do have some earnings as well for this week. Um, we are going to get Home Depot uh, Tuesday pre-market uh, as well as Target Wednesday pre-market, TJX, um, Zim, uh, Xpeng, and uh, X paying also Wednesday pre-market. Fisker, Monday after hours, I believe Fisker was supposed to report last week, but maybe they pushed it out. Uh, Wednesday after hours, Palo Alto, Cisco, um, pretty much it. Thursday pre-market, Alibaba, Walmart, Macy's. Um, Thursday after hours, Ross, Gap. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so this, this week is a big one as far as retail uh, companies and like retail outlets, right? Home Depot, um, Ross, Walmart, Target, TJX. We want to hear what they say. Do they say the consumer is slowing down or are they optimistic on the consumer? I think that could also uh, help reinforce the narrative that whatever inflation provides us on, on Tuesday, is the economy holding up? Is the consumer holding up? Or are we heading into a recession? I think these earnings and these earnings calls, especially a Walmart, a Target, a Home Depot, could be very important for stocks also. So it's pretty clear. We went over the bubble chart for next week uh, in a couple of the last videos, like it's, it's no surprise to anyone. The 250 call is seeing a lot of activity as well as the 200 put. I don't know if I'm just blind or I didn't catch this last time. Um, maybe so, but the $200 put has open interest of 40,000 with volume on Friday of 83,000. So a lot of activity is betting that Tesla stock could fall to about 200, which is my expectation in, in all of reality. These, uh, options that are seeing the most activity 
the 250 call or the 200 put is roughly what I'm saying could happen this week. So I find that with a little bit of validation, although they are pretty far out of the money. And keep in mind, none of this is a recommendation. None of this is financial advice. I I, I don't think I have to say this, but with, with any of the wordage I've used in this video, it's all been a could happen or, you know, if this happens, this could happen. It's not saying either thing is going to happen, um, but just what could possibly happen. So it's not a recommendation to buy, sell, trade anything. Now, I want to look at December 15th because that's kind of the next major op option expiration for our markets over the next coming month or so. And if you look at the calls, you have op open interest of about 46%. And put open interest of about 56%. So the put to call ratio is 1.19 for this expiration. So there is more puts than calls. If you look at the activity on Friday, on the call side, you had volume of 62.4%. And on the put side, you had volume of 37.6%. So a lot of call activity on Friday, uh, that's for sure. And the biggest expiration or strike for this expiration, I should say, is the 250 call with open interest of 39,000 and volume on Friday of 8,600. The second largest is the 260 call with open interest of 22,000 and volume of 10,000. On the put side, the $200 put has open interest of 26,000, volume of 7,800. Uh, the 160 put seen volume of 3,000 and uh, open interest of 22,000 on Friday. Uh, that would be a real uh sell your kidney opportunity to buy tesla at 160 that would just be insane and i i hope that happens because i would buy a lot a lot of shares so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video that's really everything you need to know about this upcoming week especially if you watch the video at 4 p.m that came out today then you're set, you're ready to go. Let me know what you think about Tesla stock this week, about the economic data, and where you think we're going from here. Are you tactically bullish like I am for the next, you know, couple of months and maybe not so much for the beginning of 2024 or really whenever this recession comes? Are you just bullish in indefinitely? Are you bearish indefinitely? Provide a thesis on why uh, down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel on your way out. If you guys want to take it a step further and come trade with us live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. I send out my trades. The second I make a trade, I provide thesis on why I'm making that trade. And you guys can come talk, come chat, come join the community, come learn, trade, and grow with us. Uh, again, link down below in the description of this video. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.